All right. All right, so uh, welcome everybody to the Mind, Body, Spirit Network online meetup group to uh, help you with your online marketing efforts. My name is Liz Garcia and I am the founder of the MindBodySpiritNetwork.com and my intention is to help mind, body, spirit, health type of professionals really get a handle in their online marketing efforts wherever you are at in the spectrum of expertise. Whether you're just starting out, like many of you, you just want <laughs> a landing page, and you're just starting with lead magnets and all that good stuff, um, I help you consistently generate leads every day, dramatically expand your social media and online presence, mm -hmm. and help grow your business is the ultimate intention. So um, that's what I do here, and I think helping people every step of the way with this online group is helpful. So today's topic is about email automation. And I did a little keyword research, and that was the number one phrase people were looking for is email automation as opposed to my phrase, which is email autoresponder series. <laughs> people are more familiar with email automation. And it's a great follow-up to last week's presentation, which is about lead magnets. So if you have a lead magnet, that's fantastic, but that lead magnet needs to be connected to an email automation stream of some sort. So uh, let me just grab my little outline here. Hold on, gang. And then I'm gonna share my screen in a little bit as well. So does everyone understand what email automation is? Or do you want a quickie introduction? Let's do the intro. Okay. Introduction, please. All right. So email automation is um, something that gets triggered. And so if you have an offering on your website, it's your lead magnet. And if you don't know what a lead magnet is, someone who's in the audience might not know. It's whatever something of great value you want to offer a website visitor, for example. And it could show up in a pop-up window that says, hey, subscribe to my newsletter, or hey, um, my root chakra is out, I need some help. That's Christine's new lead magnet. And you want to be able to deliver that, because someone's going to say, ooh, I want that. And in order to receive that, they're going to have to um, submit their email to you. So when someone submits their email to receive that free lead magnet, you need an automated email responder that immediately delivers that lead magnet. So that's the first step because people are not going to wait. And Connie, you might want to mute everybody because there's a lot of background noise. Thank you. And uh, you know, if, if, if you're gonna capture someone's attention online, they're online for a very short period of time. Or maybe they're just you know, cruising the internet. And if they find something of interest, they wanna look at it now. I know I do. It's like, I don't wanna wait. So to deliver that email like a day or two later, they've already forgotten about you. So it needs to be delivered immediately. And an email automation stream has a triggering effect when you set it up you're gonna say when someone opts into this list I want the trigger for immediate delivery or I want the trigger for an hour from now whatever it is you can tell it when to send so that's why email automation is important um, and it's really important in online marketing efforts because it's I would say probably if you're an online marketer and that's your business, that's 90% of your business is that email list and developing those clients and nurturing the relationship so they actually get to know you. So you become an email marketer when you get in the online business. You have to. It's the name of the game. And every super successful online marketer will tell you their greatest asset is that list. And if you've ever had a, a client list before, and they've bought something from you, they are 20% more likely to buy from you than anyone else, just so you know. You know, trying to, to get new clients is, takes a lot of effort, but once you have them, you wanna keep them and nurture them and give them great things to look forward to in their email. So I wanna talk about um, 
and Connie, you're going to let me know when I'm 10 minutes is up, <laughs> right? Okay. So I want to talk about what that first email automation stream should look like. So typically, studies have shown that it takes seven interactions with somebody before they start to trust you. So that's kind of like the magic number in that first email automation series that you do. If you're going to offer a lead magnet, you want to follow it up with a seven, seven email series of whatever that may be. And we can talk about, we're going to talk about what that is. So email number one is going to be delivering the lead magnet. It's going to be short and sweet. It's going to say, here's what you asked for. Look at it now, download it now, watch the video, whatever it is you want them to do. You're going to deliver it immediately. The trigger on that is immediate when you set up that automation series. And I'm going to show you that in the second half. The second email I want you to write is a welcome email. And the welcome email, I trigger mine for an hour after the lead magnet. And the open rates on those have been really good. And um, other marketers um, have uh, also attested to that. So that welcome email is going to describe, you're going to say, hey, thank you for becoming a part of my family or whatever it is that you're doing. Welcome to my universe. <laughs> and then you're going to tell them what to expect from you. You're going to say, hey, I'm going, to I'm going to create really valuable content for you to enjoy once a week. You're going to get this. So kind of lay out what it is that they can expect from you. And then now that makes you accountable to them. <laughs> so spell out what they can expect and... Um, Maybe it's once a week and I share a blog. Once a week, you're going to share a video of you. And it can all be short and sweet. It doesn't have to be long-winded books. And you're also going to invite them into your, your, your social media community. If you have a Facebook page, Twitter, whatever, make sure you invite them in. And if you have a private group, I really would put more emphasis on that, on Facebook. And that's what I do in my welcome series. I say, welcome, and I'm here to help you with your online marketing. I highly recommend you join my Facebook group where you can ask questions and interact with others. And then I invite them into this online meetup as well. So if you have something like this, you know, following on social media, I would put secondary. I'd rather them follow on the group and the online meetup because it has more impact. So then you would invite them into that. So kind of... We're 10 minutes is up, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, shall we go to the second breakout room? Um, let's hold off on that second breakout room for just a second. I'm going to go through this quickly because I do want to come back and walk through MailChimp for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, so there's two out of seven right done. Those are easy. Knock them right off the list. The, the next five are going to be, you want to kind of engage people and offer even more valuable information as to what you do, little pieces at a time. And if you have an opportunity to make a sale of something small, and I'm going to use Christine as example, her lead magnet has to do with um, problems with the throat chakra. And she's going to uh, give a nice little top 10 list of ways to improve that or heal it or whatever. So her third email could be discussing her remedy, her natural essential oil remedy that you could use to open up that third chakra would be an example. And it's mm -hmm. a small sale. It's like 15 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is. And you want to give that opportunity for someone to buy something from you that's an easy yes. And Christine could craft an email that says, you know, I find that using this essential oil on the third chakra really helps to open it up. You can feel the energy moving, the intention alone, blah, 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 whatever it is. She, paid, she tells the story of the effects of it when she's doing her healing work. And she ties it in with her, her work as an energy healer. But she's not selling them that yet. She's just saying, buy the essential oils. And once somebody does that, now they're 20 times more likely to buy from you again. Mm. And when you do the math, 
It's like, yes, do that. Don't try to knock them over the head with a $2,000 program because that will come <laughs> once they buy from you the first time. And that's what's called a tripwire sale. To sell something, even if it doesn't make you any money, it will in the long run. It's, it's, it's building a relationship and they're saying, oh, I like this, I want more. Hmm. And Christine's next step could be to sell um, her whole set of chakra oils. And I actually would probably offer that in the same email or a follow-up one. And then the other five emails, you don't want to sell anything big yet. You just want them to get to know you. You're going to sell something small. You can invite them in for a free consultation. And, you know, in some of the last two, you can invite them into a bigger buy-in as well. Even if it's a reading with you, Cheryl, that's not, you know, something that's $100, feel free to do that. This is all just nurturing and getting people to know you. So we're gonna stop here and we're gonna do a little breakout room. And I want you to discuss what the content, well, if you have a lead magnet, that matters first. <laughs> or what, what you think your content would look like. Now, every automation series is gonna be a little different because it needs to stick to the lead magnet. You can't go straying. You got to stick, studies have shown that when you stray and try to go in another direction, people lose you. So you got to stay on topic and stay focused on what they originally asked for. So we're going to break out for five minutes. <laughs> That's not a lot of time to figure this out, but just to start mulling around some ideas of what that automation stream looks like for you. Mm. And I know that Christine has a lead magnet, Cheryl, um, does if you go with your psychic coaching as a possibility um, or whatever something new you might have Deborah you have something in mind I think don't you for a lead magnet okay so let's break out and just discuss what that um, automation series bullet points what it would look like for you hmm. and Connie is gonna break us away and Connie you're on mute at the moment but that's okay <laughs> okay um, Kate said uh, she would like to be, oh, oh maybe she can her. join. She's Hello. out in the rain jacket. How cute is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, it's finally so, raining in Boulder. <laughs> she should be able to join us on breakout, I guess. We'll, we'll okay. test it. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. Loud Five minutes. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> Lynn, I think you have to unmute yourself and Deborah as well. There you go. There. Okay. Hi. Good. So um, who would like to start? Lynn, do you have any ideas about this topic yet? Well, I have a lead magnet on my website just because it was built in when I got the website. From okay. Um, but... I did, I'm not using it. I mean, somebody actually sent me something from there, and I was like, what is this? I'm getting spammed. <laughs> oh. I didn't even know what it was. So, obviously, it's on there, but I, I haven't used it. And it's about, it's a cleanse. It's a sugar cleanse. So, what's, what do you deliver to someone? Like a recipe for it? Um, so, I deliver them, like, so a cheat sheet for, for helping them to, um, to diminish their sugar intake. Okay. And there's some tips on how to eat less sugar. And how is it getting delivered now? Do you know? By email. Okay. Through your constant contact? Uh, through my website. So not through my constant contact. It's set up with my website. Okay. So me. it's part of their service to... to yeah. Okay. Right. And have you tested it for yourself? Like yeah. It comes it in? me. Yep. Comes okay. me. And then what showed up? It delivered the lead magnet. Right. And then was there anything after that? Um, it, I think there's a little welcome message, and I probably filled it out when I first did the website. Okay. You know, welcome. But it's not. It's just a sentence or something because I had no idea what it was. It's like, okay, what am I supposed to do here? I have no idea. And what are you – do you have access to those leads so that you can import them into your constant contact and actually yes. continue talking to people? Yes. Okay. And have you looked into that to make sure you're, you're getting your leads? 
Um, well, I know that I, I've only gotten one so far, and I okay. know I called my my uh, my website people and said, "What is this?" Right? Oh, right, because you didn't know. Right. Right. Okay, and so they're said, oh, sending no, you're you. You're getting a lead. Business, you know, it's set up, and blah. You're getting a lead, and so it's coming in, and it's all working. And it's like, oh, oh good, cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Now, did, do, are they sending you the, the leads, uh, the email addresses of those leads, or you have to go and access them yourself? Uh, no, I, I think they're sending me them. I don't remember. I have to go and look again. But I, I think, because it comes right into my email. So I think that their email is in the, you know, the email that, that, it, that, that it, they you know, they clicked on it and it's right in the email that comes to me. I think it is. Okay. But then how are they getting into your constant contact list? Is they're not getting into my constant contact. Okay. Well, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> no. You need to pay attention to when you get those leads, go in, grab the email, add them to your list so that they can be part of your newsletter. Otherwise, they're going to go dead. Right. You don't right. want that. I mean... That lead is so valuable when you start spending money on marketing, you got to realize I got to get them and you want to right. them right, right away, not let them go dead. And that's what's happening. They're going to go cold on you and then they won't be responsive. Right. Well, I just got one. So I'm like, Oh, well, I okay. pay attention to this. What is this thing? Yes, good. Like, All right. Huh, what do I do? <laughs> All right. Shoot. Deborah, we don't have time for you, but talk quick. We've got a minute. <laughs> Okay, the only thing that I think that I'm going to do is, for my lead magnet is just some seven tips for beginning meditators. Okay. And um, um, the welcome email. The, the thing that I'm concerned about is I don't really have anything, a tangible product to sell. Right. So I'm going to have to think a little bit more about that because I want to not... So if I'm going to charge somebody, I want to make sure that I provide value. Right. Well, just be a teacher for now in those follow-up emails. Okay. That's it. That's all you have to do is just keep in touch, provide valuable information, and when the time comes to offer something, a service or product or whatever, you'll already have them in place. So you're building that foundation of a business. Okay. All right. So that's good. And we are going to go back. Okay, we're back. So I, I wanted to mention before we see how that went, I know a lot of people aren't quite ready for automation series necessarily, but some of you are. And Deborah brought up a good point. She doesn't really have anything to sell yet. But for now, I want her to nurture her list with her knowledge. And just have little tidbits, you know, and it doesn't have to be a book. You know, if you struggle with writing, you could do your tip of the week. You could share your quote of the week, your tip of the week, your favorite book. Share, get, let people get to know you that way while you're developing product or services or anything. And then you're connecting because you're providing, you're like, here's a great book I just read. Could be one thing. Here's a great recipe I just had that really um, energized me in a good way. Whatever. So... You don't have to struggle with topics for email because you're an expert at something and you know more than most people on your own topic. So remember that. Another thing I want to bring up again, and I brought up this in our video uh, presentation, having a video present in every email converts at a 20% higher rate. People are going to click on that thing. So if you can create, use your webcam, you do not have to be a professional videographer, just have good lighting, <laughs> you know, have a pretty picture behind you like Cheryl <laughs> and Kana. I mean, Kana looks like a very metropolitan lady with her New York City background. So that video, I mean, the trick is understanding how to grab a, a screen, grab your video and then crop it and use it in your email and that's a whole other trick. I'll have to figure out how to teach you guys that trick and put it in a video for you. But if you can have a picture with that little, I told you that little circle with the play button, that is what gets people to click. And that video should be one to two minutes max. That's it. That's all people have the attention for and the time for. 
So put the, start putting those in your videos. You're going to get a lot more interaction and connection with your audience, and they're really going to get to know you. Okay, so this part of the video, uh, this part of the next session, I didn't even want to share what they got out of that breakout group. Or did you all forget because I blabbered on here? <laughs> no, anyone here? I think Deborah made a good point. If you don't feel like you have anything to write about, uh, yes, Lynn, you're on mute though. Unmute yourself. So I just want, I don't know, Deborah, if you have your little chat thing open, but I just sent you something if you want to follow up with me later or not, but I just wanted to let you know that it's on there. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to share my screen, <clears throat> and um, we're going to take a walk through MailChimp. A stroll through MailChimp lane. <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, right. All righty. So let me get some of this crud out of the way. And I'm going to go into MailChimp. But you know what I'm going to do first? Sorry. I'm going to walk you through what a funnel would look like. I'm going to start with one of my client's ads. I want you to just see a Facebook ad, and I'm going to show you the trail of how this all put, gets into play. So um, here's an ad on Facebook. And uh, it's going to load. Hold on, sorry you guys, it's slow loading. Okay, so this is a Facebook ad. Can everyone see that over here on the right hand of your screen? And this ad is going to her blog post on the Mind, Body, Spirit Network. So that when you click on this ad, you're gonna go to a blog post. So hold on. <laughs> Shoot. And let me find the blog post real quick. Is right. Hold on. Sorry, gang. So that, um, so now we're going to the blog post. So someone's lollygagging wrong, re reading the blog, and they come across a lead magnet right here. And I click on this lead magnet, which is a chart about how the emotions and the organs are connected. It takes me to a landing page. And of course, my screen is gonna drag today. So here's the landing page. Wondering how emotions are affecting your body, get my lead magnet. Download it now. And this opens up a subscriber form that is created in MailChimp. This is outside of my system. This is in her MailChimp account. You simply submit the email address here and you sit subscribe to the list. And let me do that real quick. Uh, let's see if I can get on this because I'm already on this list. I'm not a robot. This is what's happening. It's saying I'm real. Subscribe to the list. There's errors. That's because I'm already on the list. But anyway, that's what's going on. And it would and it would redirect me to her thank you page. Thank you for joining my list. Liz, yes. put me on there. Put me yep. on. You yes. Me on. I hear you. <laughs> Do you have a question, Lynn? Can you just put me on there? Oh, yes. Yeah. What is your email? My name. So it's L-Y-N-N-R-U-O-F-F, -F, as in Frank, at Gmail. Okay, cool. Thank you. Nice. All right, so we're subscribing Lynn. And this is what's happening on the MailChimp side in your MailChimp account. Now it should redirect me to her thank you page. And if you were in my system, I'd create this thank you page with a video. And this is really important. This is how people are gonna connect even further with you. So I'm going to pause that video, and she's offering a quickie um, reading for like 37 bucks, and she charges way more of that for her time, but I'm wanting people to get in the door to get to know her. And they would immediately schedule an appointment right here for a $37 reading. So this is her tripwire sale. 
getting people in the door. And typically 20% of people that opt in will go for this, which is a beautiful thing. This is why I want you to offer something kind of right away. And if you're in like the, a different level of marketing, I would create this for you so you can start generating money and sales and new clients. So now we're going to go into um, MailChimp and I want to take you a walk around. So um, Lynn is going to receive an email from Holly that's going to trigger her automation series. And it's populating a list right now. And you're going to create a list for every lead magnet. And there is other ways to do it. It's, it's a little cumbersome to have to create a list for every lead magnet, but you do because they're all different and they all have different intentions and you have different offerings for each one. So when I go into MailChimp, it's going to give me an overview of what's going on. And I want to go right to lists. And this is where you're going to start in your, in your efforts. And Deborah, if you're going to uh, start a list, you're going to create a list that you're going to call something like the Mind, Body, Spirit Network list for my meditation techniques. So you'll, you know exactly what the list is and where it's coming from. And anyone that's in the network, I say you got to create a list specific to the mind, body, spirit so you know where these leads are coming from and you can see whether your marketing efforts are working or not. So um, I created a new list yesterday for a new ad campaign called the Mindful Millionaire Messengers. And I'm doing a specific ad campaign for a different group, yet my lead is the same. My lead magnet is the um, cheat sheet 10 proven steps for online success, something like that. So creating a list is simple. You just click the button, create a list. It's going to say, do you want to create a list or a group? You guys are not going to get involved in groups right now. Even I don't get involved in groups because it requires something else. And I, I think groups for online marketers, you need development skills to work with that. So forget about groups right now. Just go create a list. And you just hit create a list, you name it something. So Deborah, I'm gonna use Deborah as an example. Um, this would be the Mind, Body, Spirit Network uh, Meditation Techniques Lead Magnet. So you, it's very specific. You're like, okay, that lead magnet, because you want to follow this, the eye thinking, okay, that lead magnet is generating leads. Good, I know where it's from. They want to know who it's from, and it would be from Deborah at gratefulomlife.com. That's the email address it's from, your name. And it's, uh, I've read something that you want to use your name. So it would be Deborah from Grateful Home Life. So people get to your, especially if you're a solopreneur, you kind of want to brand your name and get people used to your name and like, oh, that's the Grateful Home Lady. Or with Kate, that's the breakup expert, you know? And for Kate, I would, I do use, um, like for Holly, I've got Holly Medical Intuitive. So you remind you what you're doing or what your expertise is. And then it's going to ask about, write a short reminder about how the recipient joined your list. So then you say, you opted in for my free techniques of beginner meditation. That's how you join the list from my website, blah, blah, blah. And then down here, you can say, send notifications on it. Send me a daily summary of who's opting in. And that's enough. You don't need to know every single person that's opting in. And that's how you create a list. Now, I'm going to go straight to, it's going to force me to do something here, so I'm just going to make it up and change it later. So now I have a new list, and I created that sign-up form here, the one that you saw for Holly that comes from MailChimp. If you go to sign-up forms, um, okay, why does it look different to me today? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, shoot. It's asking me to verify. <laughs> We're getting out of here. 
It's asking me to verify Deborah's email. It will ask you to verify your email so that you know you're not making stuff up. So I'm just going to go back to a list where it's me and I don't have to worry about forms. So this is a good list to go to. So you need to create, it's automatically going to create a form for you, but it's going to be very bland. And it will look exactly like this. That's super bland. It's easy to fix though. I could get rid of this mindful millionaire messengers and I could add an image. Just say use an image. And I'm just gonna pick anything here just to keep it moving. Insert an image. And insert the image. It's a lot like a Word document process. So now I have an image. I could add a uh, message here. This is where I'd say opt in for my, this is where you reiterate the offer. Opt in for my free offer. And be specific about what it is. I just want to save time. So when someone lands on this opt-in form that I link to, you're telling them again, I want uh, opt-in for my 10 free meditation techniques. You're going to feel a lot better later in the week if you do. <laughs> Give them a reason to do it. And then really for beginners, you want to start with email only. Email and first name is fine, but you'll get a much higher opt-in rate if you just ask for email. But if you want to ask for email and first name, that's okay too, because that way you can address people by first name, which I like. Um, and then if you don't want a field, you can just delete it. So if I come here, this last name, I'm going to delete it with the negative sign and type in delete. Whoops. And get rid of it. And there's all kinds of fields you can add to this. But as a beginner, let me tell you, you don't want all of this right now. When you get a little more sophisticated in your marketing and um, you don't want to put roadblocks up and any type of extra information is a roadblock when it comes to a lead magnet. So super simple. That's what you want to do. Um, so that was how you would set up a sign up form. And that's kind of enough for you right now. And we're running out of time. So I do want to dive into an automation just to look at that real quick. And I would recommend the video on the automation because it's a little more involved. So um, then it has a URL here. So what I did is I grabbed Holly's URL and I linked it in her landing page so that it was brought them to that sign up form we saw earlier in the presentation. And that's how you connect the two in a simple way. So Deborah, you're going to need to, and I can help you with this also, but you need to have some type of sign up form. And then you can create your own thank you page too here. If you come down here, there's an option for the thank you final welcome page or confirmation thank you page. You can go and customize that as well. You can do it with a pretty picture of you and some of your own words. Thank you for joining my list. I uh, look forward to getting to know you better. And there's tons of, of forms that you can create. You can look, you can even create survey landing pages, which is interesting. Hmm. This is new. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so there's lots of goodies in there you can play around with. So I'm going to get out of here and go to automation because we don't have a lot of time and this is kind of involved. So I'm going to create an automation and this is showing, uh, this right here is showing me all the automation streams I've created. And again, I create one for each lead magnet. And that can sound overwhelming and, and it can be, but if you're, if that small item that you sell or the ultimate core product that you're selling is related, you can duplicate an automation series and then just kind of edit it for the particular lead magnet without having to recreate the wheel every time. So for instance, this uh, millionaire messenger automation series I'm pointing to was a duplicate of another one, but then I went in and fine tuned it for the audience who is my millionaire messengers. And I simply did that by this drop down list. I said, replicate it. And that's how you can make this easier on yourself. And then in the title of the automation, I'm saying it's going to this audience, Millionaire Messengers, and they're, I'm delivering the cheat sheet lead magnet. So that's how you would kind of um, identify that. 
So I'm going to create a new automation fresh just to walk you through it. And it's kind of involved, but we'll get started. <laughs> so it's going to bring you to this page. And um, Deborah, you might want to watch this one because you're going to make one soon. <laughs> it has all these options. They're trying to make it easier for you. So where are you on the list of offerings that you have? Are you an e-commerce person, nonprofit, education, music, software, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to go, I always go with custom. So I, I'm going to create a custom automation, and it's going to bring me here. And it's just going to show me create an email series that fits your unique business needs with a custom workflow. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say add automation, and I'm going to name it. I'm going to call this um, Whimsical Women. <laughs> this is my Whimsical Women automation series. And then it's going to ask you, what list do you want to populate with this automation? And I'm going to say, it's going to go to my millionaire messengers. That's the list I want. So you have to create the list first before you can create the automation series. So every lead magnet is going to have its own list. And then every automation series, you're going to feed with that list. So you create, you tell it what list it goes to, and you hit next. And um, here's my custom workflow. It's, it's starting with a blank slate. I've got one email. And I first want to address the trigger, which is at the very top. And it's saying the trigger is what it defaulted. It defaults to one day after subscribers are manually added to our workflow. I want it, I don't want to be add, manually adding to my workflow, but you can. But for this purposes, it's going to trigger when someone opts into something. So I'm going to edit my trigger first. And up here it says manual add. I don't want that. I want to change the trigger to. Um, Sign up, a subscriber joins your list. That's the trigger. And then I want it to delay. I want it, I don't want it to delay. I want it to trigger immediately. And then I just also want the option, and in Lynn's case, she would want this option. I want it to trigger when subscribers are imported because she's taking a list that she needs to import into Constant Contact. And the minute they hit that list, you want to trigger your automation series so that they get in the stream. So then I'm going to update my trigger. So in, in MailChimp, you have to change this because it's not going to work for you. And you're going to be like, why is this not working? So this is very important for you to pay attention to all my Mind, Body, Spirit Network people because this matters. And then you can design your first email. And then if you're going to add emails, you'll add to it. So I'm going to just add another email real quick. And this one's saying, the trigger is right above. This trigger on the first one says, immediately after someone subscribes. The second trigger is going to be my welcome email. I'm going to edit the trigger because the default is one day later. But on this one, I want it to go one hour later. And I'm going to update that trigger. And then I'm going to have five more emails. And on this one, I'm going to let it default to the next day for email one which is what it's going to do. I'm going to add another one. The default is going to be the day after that, which is fine. The fifth one, I want to go two days after that. So I'm going to edit the trigger, and I'm going to make it two days after that. And we're running late, so if anyone needs to go, don't feel bad, you can. So two days is email five. Email six, I'm going to do one day after that, which is fine, the default. And then the final one, email seven, I'm going to trigger uh, two days after that as well. So this is just in general what you can do. That, would what, that is what a typical automation stream would look like. And then I'm going to go into the designing of one real quick to show you what it looks like. You're going to name it. This is custom workflow. This is deliver lead magnet. And then you're going to have a subject line. And this would be, here's what you asked for. 
And those subject lines are so important, I can't tell you. You've got to make sure they get opened, and that's, that will determine whether they get opened or not. So if you have a weak subject line, you've got to keep that in mind. And MailChimp has this killer uh, tool here that says, how do I write a good subject line? Right under this box, you click on it, and you can do subject line research. So I know I want to put here, here's your whatever. And this happens to be a good one, this phrase. Here's your search. And it's telling me, here's your is a three-star rating. So using that phrase is good. I like to see four or five in that opening one. Here's your. So use that subject line search to try to find four and five-star phrases to get that darn thing opened in the first place. So that's the setup. The next step is to pick a template. And typically I do create templates for many of my members so that you can just go grab one. And they would, you would find them in the saved templates file, which I have a bunch of saved templates here. And I'm gonna grab one um, that I'm gonna use so that you don't have to recreate the wheel every time. If you have a saved template, it's got all the links and general outline that you want, and then you just edit each box. So as you mouse over here, you can everything is editable, each box. So I, I just hit the edit button. It comes up over here. I'm gonna highlight where it comes up. On the right-hand side, you change it, whatever you want, then you save and close it. And that's all you have to do. And you can change the image. You can replace the image and you upload it or you grab it like anything you would upload from your computer. You just do an upload, grab the image, you're good to go. Same with editing stuff here. That's how you create an email. And it has these other nice options here on the right. If you want to put a divider in, for example, you want to break up the text and make it nice and clean or add a new section, you can divide a, put a divider in over here. So it already has stuff ready to go and says how thick do you want it, what color do you want it. I'm just going to save and close it. So now I have a divider. And then I wouldn't mind throwing in um, something else. Like I'm going to throw in a box that has an image and a caption. I just want to see, so show you guys how easy it is just to throw in a box here. And now I can browse an image here. I'm just going to grab one like this. Insert the image. Now the image is there. I can edit the caption that says, hey, go watch my video now. You're going to love it. It's as simple as that. And videos really should go at the top of your email. It's while over here, so I'm just going to drag it up. You want that video to be at the top of the page because that's um, primo responsiveness. People respond to this. You want to put it up near the top of the page, and it's not moving very well, but it's as simple as that. Dragging blocks when you're designing an email in MailChimp is pretty simple. <laughs> of course, it's not going to work for me right now. There we go. And that's how that's done. So the, there's a, a lot to it, but I want to at least show you how to create an email. And I want to go back to um, an unsaved email for you just to get started. And they have themes in here. They have particular layouts. Like I would stick to super simple, like a one column layout for everyone is fine. You could just click this and you're good to go. So if I click this, I'm changing my template and I would just want something simple. This is a great way to start every time. And it's going to recognize my content, which is similar, and it's just going to fill in, fill in the blanks, which um, may be confusing to you guys watching this. But <laughs> when you get started, start with a simple template if you haven't designed one yet. And then you can save it as a template for future use. And then... Um, That's how you would start an email automation series. I would save and continue. And it's not gonna let me start the series until I populate every one of these emails. And you can start, if you're not ready for each one, just start with the lead magnet in the welcome series, that's enough. And then you can come back and edit it 
and add to the flow as you're ready. So don't worry about getting all seven at once. I want you to get the lead magnet and the welcome series done, and that's enough to get started until you kind of settle into what's the next one gonna be. So um, I'm gonna confirm this. And it's telling me I got a lot of problems. <laughs> Before you can send, please resolve the issues below. So it's gonna tell you when you have made a mistake and you can go back and fix it. And it says, here's the little details button where you can go and see what did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong here? And then it won't let you set it up until everything's right. So it walks you through the whole thing. And I'm just gonna save and exit because I'm not gonna go and fix, I'm gonna come back and fix it later. So you can do that. And I'm just gonna go back to um, all of my automation. And again, every little step of the way has instruction and help right up here. Just Google what you want to know and they'll walk you through it. So um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen here and see if anyone has questions. And I, I'm, I apologize, I cannot teach you MailChimp in 10 minutes, that's for sure. But I want to at least help you kind of feel okay about navigating it and see what it kind of looks like overall. So um, if anyone has questions, I'm happy to answer questions right now. Yes, Kana? I put on a question box. It's probably a very basic question, but doesn't um, putting a video in the email? You, you cannot put a video in the email. What you have to do is create an image of the email, and then you would save it to your computer and then you would crop it and maybe I should show you how to do it. You, you can't put an email, a video in an email, you have to show an image and then link to the video on YouTube or okay. wherever you have it hosted. Or if you're writing a blog and you've embedded a video in your blog, send them to the blog page. So you always have to send them somewhere else in email, which you do want to do. And I think really, unless you have a really powerful YouTube channel, I would send people to your website instead because you want to generate traffic to your website is a better choice i think unless you're a big youtube star I and mean, if you're doing a lot of youtube marketing then you would send them to your channel to develop the channel but youtube will still pick up the activity going on in your blog like people have watched it it's still picking up that activity which is good so thank you should, does you got you guys want to see a quickie on how to screen grab or do you know how to screen grab something or would you like yes, to see that? Please. Okay. So let me go to YouTube and let me share my screen again. Hold on. Um, share. And you do need some tools and there are some online tools for doing this that I have to kind of research again because I, I have all my tools readily available to me. <laughs> so I go to YouTube. And I'd find one of my videos, and I got to sign in, crud. I don't have to find one. I can just use any video. Ah, there's one of mine right here. All right. So I go to my video. And um, on a PC, over at the Mind whoops, Mind hold on. Okay, so on a PC, I hit the control button, and then at the top of the keyboard, there's a print control um, key. I hit them at the same time. It's grabbing my screen. It's taking a picture of my screen. And on a Mac, I forget what the command is, but I know if you Google it, what's the command for screen grab on a Mac, you'll find it. It's pretty easy because I've had to do that before. And then I'm going to open one of my pieces of software. And it's remembering the size of the screen. And you could open any software because uh, it's going to save that image to your desktop. And you can find it in like a temporary file or you'll see it right on your desktop. You'll see the image. And then if you have, uh, I think there's some pretty uh, simple software out there for managing images these days. Um, I don't use it, so I'm not aware of it. But if anyone here is aware of it, please share that 
So when I open a new file in my Fireworks software, I can just hit control paste because it's copying that screen grab I just did and pasting it. And now I have the whole screen here in my software. And I'm just gonna crop it so I just see the video like this. And this particular video doesn't have the play button because I shut it off, but you can leave it on when you um, go to your video, but it is showing these, these controls down here. So now I have the screen grab of this video and it's obvious a video. And then I would save it and then I would upload this picture to my email. That's how that would work. Um, hold on, let me stop sharing again. So you're kind of following how that would happen or does anyone here have software that they can use that's simple that you could crop an image is anyone aware of that type of software i'll have to look into it um i'm pretty sure canva.com can do that for you that's that can do that and pick monkey can do it too monkey. yeah right i forgot about pick monkey monkey those are great um graphical pieces of software that you can use for free just to do simple tasks like that Hickmonkey.com or Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. And then if you work with me, I do all that for you. <laughs> Take all that steps out of the way. Uh, for so, for easy screen grab for Mac. Yes. You can do with shift and command and number four and then drag the sign. Cool. Oh, did you test it, Kana? Yeah. Try doing that? Yeah. Yep. And then it shows up in your desktop, as I recall. It will show up as an image, then you have the image, and then you just go crop out the background on either one of those software platforms. And I bet if you Google, I need to crop an image, there's a free service. You upload it, you crop it, you download it again. And I've done that with image optimization. I used to use a free service where I'd upload an image, I'd optimize it for the web, and then I'd download it, and then it's good for the web, as opposed to a high resolution thing you don't want to be using. Uh, Christine, do you know if PicMonkey optimizes images for you as well? I don't know if the free version does. Okay. I've never tried that before. Okay, so I do need to give you a heads up. If you're doing your own website and you're adding images and you don't optimize them for the web, it's going to drag your site down. No one's going to stay on it because it's taking forever and a day for one image to load. So you need to be aware that optimizing your images before sharing them to a website or email matters. Because you don't want that email to load, like, you know, it's painful, it's not even opening, it's like, forget it, I'm not gonna read this. So uh, you need to be aware of that, and there is free services you can use online to upload the image, optimize it, and then, you know, resizing it for the web is good. You know, many images, if you're not aware, are like, could be 5,000 pixels wide, which is a high resolution, and that ain't gonna cut it online. Your images should be a thousand, typically most of the images that you guys would use, especially in email, are gonna be 500 pixels wide. So just that little number is good to know. Like how wide should my picture, you know, this, uh, MailChimp is 600 wide is the widest if you have like a banner. You don't want a big picture taking up the whole email. So I shrink my um, video images to maybe 400 wide, that's it. Just to have those numbers in mind. So. Any other questions on the email front? Yes, Deborah. Um, maybe it's not on the email. Well, there's a couple questions that I have. Okay. One, can you use MailChimp for people to sign up for classes? Um, you can use MailChimp for people to register for on for being notified about all your classes. Okay. Um, and then. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah, so you're just going to have to set one up for each class okay and then you can move them into an overall thing so you just got to clean out that list every time you have a new class because you don't want to be emailing to someone who's not registered for that class um, you can but that's not really what it's meant for but yes you can do it okay because i use it for webinar registration oh you know, okay they'll just they'll just belong to a different list okay and then once the class is over, you're going to want to move them into a general list and get them out of there so that you don't re-invite them to a class they already took. 
Okay, and that's what that's one of the things that I wanted to know too, is because there may be something that it, maybe I'm I'm offering a new class. Yep. And I may want to send it to several lists. Yes. Or do I after somebody attends a specific class, do I move them over to a general list? And how difficult is that? Do I have to go in there and type in that information? No, you say move it to another list. Okay. Super simple. In, in your list management, there's a little drop down under list management and you'll collect, connect, uh, check off everybody and you move them to another, a master list. And this is actually where grouping would come in handy, Deborah. You'd move them to a master list and then you put them in a group of people that took your classes before so that you know where they came from. And then if you want to send emails just to them, you can say only send it to this group because it's a better strategy and you'll get better open rates if you help you, you give people what they want. But it's easy, it is nice to manage and I have to do this for myself. I, I've got to move everyone into a master list and put them in groups. And you can, since you're starting fresh, I would recommend you learn how to create a group. Okay. And move everyone into the mat. You'll have a master list. You'll have a group for meditation classes, a group for vision board classes. They'll all be on the master list because some of your emails can go to everybody and you want them to. Mm -hmm. And then others are just going to go to a section of the list of the group, just the group. Okay. And so then a person or a contact can only be on one list at a time. Uh, no. Someone okay, can opt perfect. into other lists too, but you don't, you, you kind of, you pay for them to be on there twice. You know, you're starting to eat up your, you, you want to eventually get them all on a master list or, but you know, it doesn't matter if the, if you're being specific, that's what, that's where groups and masters make it economical to manage your list better, but it's a little more advanced management skills you got to learn on how to do that. Okay. But it's a good practice, and since you're starting off fresh, I would recommend you learn how to do that. Okay. So that you can manage everybody in a master list and then send emails to groups on there, and then you can keep track of everybody in the master list. Okay, perfect. But yes, someone can be on two lists at the same time, but the, the downside of that is if you send a general email and you send it to everyone in all the different lists, they'll say, hey, I got two of your emails. And they'd be like, uh, I, had okay. someone, I had someone who was on five lists of mine. So I had to clean up my list so that they didn't get five emails anymore and stick them in a master list. Okay. All righty. Did you have any other questions on that topic or? No, the only other question that I had is where do you get your images? I like them. Oh, I get my images at bigstock.com. They have fantastic images. I have some great ones for you lined up too, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, okay. And it's, it's like, it's not worth looking for free images. Just get nice images. They're like two bucks a piece, depending oh, on. Oh, okay. I mean, it's so worth it to have a beautiful image that speaks to you and your audience. And it shows right. that you care, you know, you just, it's fun to have, and it's fun. And I don't have to worry about snagging somebody else's image. No. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Is that a big stock photo dot com? Uh, big stock photo. Let me okay. double check. Is that what you came up with? I I'm always there. I forget what it is. Let me go. Big. No, just big stock dot com. But if you Google big stock photo, I'm sorry, it's both. It's big stock dot com and big stock photo dot com. It's both. It's the same same thing. Yep, it's the same thing. Yeah. Thank you. I love their images and you really got to search around and get specific about what you want. Like real gen, even if it's a general concept of like, I want wonder, like someone wants something of freedom concepts, wonder concepts, waterfall, whatever it is you want, it'll, it'll come up with some great images for you. And then you can save them to light box folders. So if you have an idea, do you know what that is? Just like a folder on your desktop. You create a folder. So Deborah, you, I started folders on my big stock for just meditation. I have a folder just for yoga, just for inspirational backgrounds. Like I need inspirational backgrounds for quotes. So I have folders for everything so I can go right to it 
and just populate it. When I find something I like, I drag it to the folder so I can look at it later. And when I'm trying to select images, I like to put them all together in a folder so then I can go and narrow down what I want. Okay. So it's a good, um, yeah, definitely take advantage of their, their, their save to a light box feature. It's, um, it's good. Okay. Anyone else have questions today or? So you are, you're a member, a monthly member of Big Stock and then you purchase each photo that you like? No, you have to buy a minimum, I think, of $25 worth of credits. It's either 25 or 50 bucks. I think there's a $25 one. You don't need, you don't need the monthly membership one. That's oh, for okay. me. And, and if you buy one image for $2, you can use it for forever? Oh, yeah. It's licensed. For, it's royalty free. If you put it on a T-shirt, that's a different story. Depends on your use. If it's just for the web or a business, you can't use it for a business logo. You've, there's licensing issues on some of those, but most of it you don't have to be concerned with unless you're creating a product out of it. So you're going to have to look deeper. You want to buy credits. You don't want to buy monthly membership stuff. So you're going to, there's other options that they just automatically bring you to the monthly membership because they want you to spend a lot of money. <laughs> and for me, it works because I use a lot of images and then I don't have to keep track. I'm like, I can just buy as many as I want and I have a lot of selections. So for me, it makes sense to do that. But for you, just buy credits to get started. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, if that's it, we're going to call it a wrap. <laughs> and I'm going to shut off the recording. <laughs>